Hear these words from Psalm 103. Let my whole being bless the Lord. Let everything inside me bless his holy name. Let my whole being bless the Lord and never forget all his good deeds. How God forgives all your sins, heals all your sickness, saves your life from the pit, crowns you with faithful love and compassion, and satisfies you with plenty of good things so that your youth is made fresh like an eagle's. The Lord works righteousness, does justice for all who are oppressed. God made his ways known to Moses, made his deeds known to the Israelites. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, very patient and full of faithful love. God won't always play the judge. He won't be angry forever. He doesn't deal with us according to our sin or repay us according to our wrongdoing. Because as high as heaven is above the earth, that's how large God's faithful love is for those who honor him. As far as the east is from the west, that's how large the space between the sins that God has removed from us. Like a parent feels compassion for their children, that's how the Lord feels compassion for those who honor him. Because God knows how we're made, God remembers we're just dust. The days of a human life are like grass, they bloom like a wild flower, and when the wind blows through it, it's gone. Even the ground where it stood doesn't remember it. But the Lord's faithful love is from forever ago to forever from now for those who honor him. And God's righteousness reaches to the grandchildren of those who keep his covenant and remember to keep his commands. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. The divine messengers, you divine messengers, bless the Lord. You who are mighty in power and keep his word, who obey everything he says, bless him. All you heavenly forces, bless the Lord. All you who serve him and do his will, bless him. All God's creatures, bless the Lord. Everywhere, throughout his kingdom, let my whole being. Joy, compassion, and peace.
Hey, uh, my name is Sayaka. Um, I'm sure you all know my wonderful, beautiful mother, Lynn. Uh, she's the best lady in the universe. Um, but I identify as a pansexual, uh, which is um, basically loving everyone, uh, regardless of gender identity or expression or any of that. Um, and I am a transmasculine person. Um, I've kind of uh, come to the point where I don't really view myself as like male or female or anything like that, but I definitely do tend to sway towards the more masculine side of things. Um, and I do use uh, male pronouns, so he, him. Uh, but I also will accept gender-neutral pronouns, so that's uh, they or them. Um, but yeah, so my own little personal journey starts um, basically when I was born, I guess. Um, you know, growing up I was kind of um, more in between things and kind of more on the masculine side. Uh, I played cops and robbers with the boys on my street and I hated playing house or like teacher with like the girls and um, all that kind of stuff. But when I was a junior in high school, I got my first girlfriend, <laughs> um, which was a really fun thing. Uh, she was one of my best friends and she came out as a lesbian and I was like, oh, well, I guess this is a good time for me to also come out as someone who likes girls. And uh, so we dated for a while, broke up, and then I got my second girlfriend. And uh, we were very popular, I suppose. Um, popular enough to win prom princess, uh, prom princesses. And um, by the end of my senior year, I started realizing that like, I was not female, I guess. Um, you know, I was really sort of battling with the idea of being trans, and um, yeah, uh, eventually, uh, after my first year at college, um, I decided that it was time to come out to my friends and family, um, and it was just like really a huge weight lifted off of my chest. Uh, it was really awesome to um, really accept this about myself and like kind of make other people accept that about me as well. Um, and now that I'm in like a, my young adulthood and stuff, uh, I found a lot of great queer spaces where I feel genuinely comfortable around the people that I'm with and um, I feel respected and cared for by those people. So, how I connect, uh, you know, my queerness with God uh, really revolves around Matthew 5, 14 through 16, which I have talked about many times before. But, um, that says, You are the light of the world, a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all the people in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. 
Now, I love that verse so dearly because at a time when I was really struggling with my trans identity, um, this popped up on my phone as a Bible verse of the day. And uh, it really just kind of hit me that, you know, like, yeah, I am a city set on a hill and I'm not gonna be hidden. And I, you know, just need to show everyone how, like, beautiful I am and, uh, you know, just, like show that like God loves all of us and it seems like a lot of people get lost in the sense that God truly does love all of us and he created all of us and um, yeah. speak out to witness to worship for everyone born the right to be free and God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy, compassion and peace. Yes, God will delight when we all create us a justice, justice and joy. So I am half Japanese and obviously my mom's the white one, <laughs> um, but my dad is Japanese and that was a very nerve wracking thing for me uh, in coming out because really Asian culture in general is very like, they just kind of like to ignore the LGBTQ community for the most part. Uh, they kind of just like to pretend that it doesn't exist. Um, so naturally I was very nervous about coming out to my, to my dad and like, you know, like his side of the family and everything, but like, I guess not really to my surprise because like I always knew my dad loved me so dearly, but one of the things that he always liked to say was just that Sayaka is still Sayaka. Um, you know, coming out as gay the first time, uh, he was just like, well, like Sayaka is still Sayaka, just likes girls now. <laughs> um, and then when I came out as trans, it was still, well, Sayaka is still the same exact person. Um, you know, just, I gotta use different pronouns now. And um, so that was, that was a really nice thing for my dad to, um, you know, truly accept this and not cause any other problems. <laughs> um, but one thing that um, my dad hasn't ever really like talked to me directly about any of this kind of stuff. Um, but one of the times that he that he did, he said that he just didn't want things to be harder for me which as a parent, you know, obviously you don't want things to be harder for your kid. Um, but, you know, with time, like, I know that he understands now that this isn't something that I just wanted to do. Like, who wants to be trans? <laughs> um, but, like, he knows that, like, I'm living my life as I should be, and uh, I'm very thankful for that. Um, yeah, like, some of my, like, uh, extended Japanese family still doesn't, like, know everything about me, and, like, that's totally, totally cool. Uh, like, my, my grandparents actually don't know, um, but my mom told me the other day that, uh, the last time that they went to go visit Japan, uh, my Aunt Yuka, uh, who I have met once, <laughs> um, was asking my mom about like how I was and was like using correct pronouns and stuff like that. And so it was just a very um, 
very uplifting thing, uh, knowing that, um, you know, the Asian people uh, <laughs> can, you know, accept and, um, you know, lift me up with stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so happy Father's Day to everyone and happy Pride also. I love happy you all. Happy Pride. For gay and for straight, a place at the table. Covenant shared, a welcoming place. A rainbow of race, and gender and color. Gay and for straight, the chalice of grace and God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy, compassion and peace. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice, justice and joy. On this Father's Day, we want to bless all dads and men who have nurtured us in our lives. To those who witnessed the birth this year of their first child, we celebrate with you. To those who lost a child this year, we mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badge of food stains, we appreciate you. To those who experienced loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or running away, we mourn with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with all that happens during that time and tears and disappointment, we walk with you. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't mean to make this harder than it is. To those who are foster dads, mentor dads, and spiritual dads, we need you. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate with you. And to those who have disappointment and heartache and distance with your children, we sit with you. To those who lost their fathers this year, we grieve with you. To those who experienced abuse at the hands of your own father, we acknowledge your experience. To those who lived through driving tests and medical tests and the overall testing of fatherhood, we're better for having you in our midst. To those who step-parent, we walk with you on these complex paths. To those who envisioned lavishing love on grandchildren, yet that dream is not to be, we grieve with you. To those who will have emptier nests in the coming year, we grieve and rejoice with you. To those who place children up for adoption, we commend you for your selflessness and remember how you hold that child in your heart. And to those who are hopeful with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. This Father's Day, we walk with you. Well, happy Father's Day, everyone. We wanted an opportunity at some point during our worship service to do something to honor Father's Day. So we thought of this uh, this year was asking dads, what, what was it like when you first held or first met your child? What what was that experience like? Hello. I want to thank you for the opportunity on this Father's Day to share what being a father means to me. 
I've actually been blessed with the opportunity to be a father three times, three boys. The first was to become an instant stepfather when I first got married to an eight-year-old boy named Ryan. I admit going from single to being a stepfather made me a little bit nervous. But shortly after we married, that first time I came home and he was sitting on the steps with all of his ball equipment, ready to play toss, I thought, this could work. Later, I had the opportunity to see the birth of Alex and then Adam. And when you do that, it's emotionally overwhelming. You definitely think that, you know, miracles are real. With all three boys, it's been a true blessing throughout my life to, throughout their lives, <laughs> to be a parent and to get to participate with them and raise them and uh, go through all the ups and downs that happen throughout the course of parenting. Um, it's all been great. It's all been great. I wouldn't change anything for the world. And uh, I want to thank them for allowing me the opportunity to be their father. And I pray that uh, we'll be all be close for many, many years. I was so young when I became a father. I was 22 years old. Shelly and I got married when I was 20. Um, and I just remember not knowing what to expect. And uh, that was my oldest daughter, Beth, who uh, was born in 1985. And then Elise, I uh, was four, in some, four years and some months later uh, in 1990. And she uh, and Beth both have just, um, you know, really, I grew up with them in so many ways. And they, you know, I learned on the job <laughs> so much stress and just of those those years early years in particular um for my own life were really difficult at times and uh you know starting a new church uh, just starting this whole new career as a pastor and vocation and uh learning on like i said as i went and uh, i will say one thing about both of our you know my relationship with both of them is that it's dynamic and it still grows we still learn we're still discovering things about being daughter and and father, and um, that is really cool. Uh, and I'm just so appreciate and love them so much. Uh, I just knew when they were both born, I held them that life was changing forever. And even now that they're, you know, the age they are, uh, it still changes. Hi, when my children were born. I wasn't allowed in the delivery room. I only got to see my children when they were uh, uh, taken from the delivery room to the nursery. Uh, the first time I got to hold them was when Kathy was being discharged from the hospital. It was an awesome moment and a frightening moment all at the same time. So when they were born, uh, uh, I was in college or in graduate school and becoming a father was uh, one step up in feeling responsibility. Both Kathy and I felt that. Fortunately, we had a safety net in our, both of our families. They were there if we needed them. We weren't uh, alone, so the joy and wonder from our expanding family was my primary experience of becoming a father. For me, when, when I held my uh, son Micah for the first time he was our, our oldest when I held him for the first time um he was born by cesarean section and uh so he and after he was born he uh, was laid on on his mom's chest for a while and I don't remember when I first held him but I remember when I first saw him and I remember when he was when they laid him on Sarah's chest and I was right there with her and and I remember the, the overwhelming sort of uh, <laughs> feeling of us looking at him together. And I remember um, how weird it was because he was so powerless, right? Like he couldn't move at all and, and he couldn't hold his head up. And I just, there's so little and seems so fragile. And like also how powerful he was in terms of like how wildly powerless I felt. It was just such a, an intense experience. and. Um, I know that for Levi, right after he was born, um, that time was a little different. The biggest thing I wanted to do was see our family. I, I, we had a lot of family in the waiting room, and I was just so eager to go tell them that, that he had been born. And so 
And I also remember when Micah saw Levi for the first time, he had a little gift to give him that the doctor was around the corner trying to sneak a peek at, at uh, their introduction to each other. But um, those are those are my memories. So I remember when Lincoln was born, just being totally overwhelmed with emotion and relief and just looking at him I felt like I just knew that uh, my life was never going to be the same that this um, was going to change everything and it was an amazing amazing feeling 